Geodesic domes really look complicated, but in actual fact they are constructed out of two different lengths of tubing. Our one is going to be slightly different though, and we are going to use three lengths. So after acquiring yourself a fully equipped metal workshop, you can end up with this. As you notice, they are colour coded. First job to be done is to cut all the lengths accurately to whatever length they've been decided to be cut at. It's kind of a boring job and when you run out of energy in one volunteer there's always another really enthusiastic one to take its place. After the initial cuts are done it's then taken outside to the pneumatic hammer. This is a dirty great machine that gives it a walloping thump on the one end and makes the entire end of the pole completely flat as a pancake. Look at that, not bad. Manually, that would have been quite a job to accomplish that accurately. Look how flat that is. Both ends are flattened and some clamps have been attached here just to make sure that it doesn't shift laterally when it gets that whack. Once the end's been flattened, which it's done by using a foot operation, it's slightly bent upwards there as you can see to create an angle. This angle will be creating the contour of the dome itself. Next job is to go back inside again and to use the punch. This punch is a hole clean through the metal and it's a really dangerous machine so you better watch out by getting your thumb out of the way or any other appendages. What you should have when you're finished is something that looks very much like that. Accurate holes and as you can see by the pole at the top there's a slight bend. Once they're all in place they're taken out to the site with the JCB and as in walls to be constructed accurately you need one person to take charge. This is the person that's going to get the blame when everything falls down so he has to be really really on the ball. First job set everything out in a circle take your second length and create triangles with it. Once they're done then you'll have to use the holes to attach them to the joins and they'll start to raise vertically like that. The triangles join each other and once they're all together it's really beautiful and looks a little bit like a crown. Ironic though because this is the base and crowns usually go on the top. After that's joined, the triangles are joined once again with a lateral piece and here you have a really nice enclosure. And this structure itself is extremely strong and you can fill it up with plastic or cement and create all kinds of things like swimming pools or water catchment areas. We're building a dome though, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the next layer. The next level goes up and here you have that enclosure with a crown on top. Notice there's a slight bend towards the center. Those are then joined up. Notice that the tops are not exactly parallel and that's what makes it interesting. The dome itself is like a combination of hexagons and pentagons. And once they go up, look at that, that's three quarters finished and really strong supporting everybody's weight there. The team works beautifully together and it's not long before the final pieces are ready to be put into place. There we go, and this is a dome that has a diameter of around 6 meters. Last phase before the end, and before you know it, it's complete, and then there's just the gravity test to be done. Look at all those bodies happily climbing all over the structure. So, there we go, short stages, one, two, three, four, five, up it goes, and the team's really happy with the framework for the dome itself.